Welcome back. This is section 7.4, action and reaction on different masses. In your textbook, this is section 6.4. So the big idea here in this section is a given force exerted on a small mass produces a greater acceleration than the same force exerted on a large mass. So remember hitting the bug on the windshield. That strike is the same, exact same force. The windshield is exerting on the bug, the same force as the bug is exerting on the windshield. Well, the windshield has such a bigger mass that that interaction is not causing much acceleration to the windshield. In fact, the windshield doesn't even really, uh, I don't know of a bug that would cause a windshield to break, maybe, but it certainly would break the bug. So the smaller mass is exerting, getting more acceleration. Remember, force equals mass times acceleration. So the bigger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. Remember, they're on the same side of the equal sign. The bigger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. The smaller the mass, the bigger the acceleration. So when two uh, objects are interacting with forces of action-reaction, Whichever one has the smaller mass will accelerate the more. So, let's get some examples. The earth is pulled up by the boulder exactly the same amount as the boulder is being pulled towards the earth. But the earth is so much more big, it's so bigger, that the, that amount of force is not enough force to sh show any difference. Um, it's infinite infinitesimal, I think is the word, uh, amount of movement of the earth, but it's a huge amount of movement for the boulder. Okay, this next section is really important. Um, the mass, remember, is inversely proportional to the acceleration. So the smaller the mass, the more it accelerates, but the forces are going to be the same. Okay, so the bigger the mass, at the same force, the bigger the mass, the smaller the acceleration, the smaller the mass, the larger acceleration. But in both cases, since they act with equal and opposite force, the forces will always be the same. So let's look at it, let's look at the case of a, a cannonball. When a cannonball is fired, there's an interaction between the cannon and the cannonball. The cannonball is uh, there's an explosion behind the cannonball. The cannonball pushes back on the cannon. That's what causes recoil. If you've ever shot a gun and it kicks, the recoil is the, is the kick of the explosion on the gun. And the same explosion is causing a force on the bullet, or in this case, the cannonball. So the cannonball is shot out of the gun and the bullet is sh shoving back on the gun. The bullet moves faster because it's accelerated more. There's a kick in the gun, but not the same amount of kick as the bullet's being kicked. The kick, the kick on the bullet's a lot bigger than the kick on the gun. So you might expect the cannon to kick more than it does. The cannonball moves so fast compared with the cannon. So according to Newton's second law, we most also consider the masses. So, you know, you could conceivably pushed down by shooting a gun. If I shoot a gun, I'm shooting down on the bullet, and the bullet is shooting up on the on the the gun. If I shoot enough bullets, I could actually make the gun go up or down or sideways wherever I'm going. So looking at the looking at the explosion, I've got an explosion here that accelerates the, the cannonball forward. The same explosion is the same amount of force acting on the cannon. The cannon is bigger than the ball, and so the cannon doesn't accelerate as much as the ball. It may accelerate a lot, that's why you need a cannon restraint rope on a boat, or it'll go right through the wall of the ship, but you, the, the bolt will, will catch it, but it's still going to, to have a kick because you've got the same force acting on both objects. So a same force with a little mass is a huge acceleration, and the same force with a big mass is a little acceleration. So the same um, thing, we could expand this a little bit and say, what about air coming out of a balloon? The air is pushing against the balloon. The balloon is pushing against the air. 
the air squeezes out and goes in one direction and the lighting the lightened balloon goes in the other direction so the the smaller the balloon gets the smaller the mass gets and the easier it is to accelerate so a balloon when you let air go out of it will start slow and then get faster and faster as the weight of that balloon air combination reduces because the air is being forced out so it's pretty cool it's even toys are physics so here is a misconception a lot of people think that if I have a balloon okay and it's losing some air okay then the air is shoving up against the the ground the ground shoves up on the air and then the air shoves on the balloon and makes the balloon move it really doesn't do that at all the balloon is squeezing okay because it's a rubber balloon and that balloon is losing gas and as it loses gas it's shoving out and that same gas is shoving on the balloon so the balloon is going up the same reason why a gun kicks back that bullet is pushing back and the gun is pushing forward and the bullet weighs less than the gun and so it accelerates fast and the gun accelerates slow so the gases coming out of a balloon are, acceler are accelerating very fast. The balloon, which weighs more than the gases, are accelerating slow. And that's the way a rocket works. The same idea. So here's a rocket. The gases being shot out of the, the balloon, or in this case a rocket, is, sh is making the rocket go up the same way that a gun kicks when you shoot it. So it's firing little tiny cannonballs of gas out of the cannon, which is this, this is the rocket ship, and then the, it pr pr goes further. So it's not the ground shoving back against, because a rocket works even in, the, in space. So the idea of lift is really cool. If you have an airplane wing, it's the air that's riding that airplane. So you're shoving air down, and the, the air is shoving up on the wing, and that's what's coming. When you have a helicopter, you've got two wings that are whirling around in a circle. So you have or about four wings or six wings, however many that are attached to the middle of the circle. And it's shoving down because it's, the blade is curved. It's shoving down on the air. Well, that air is shoving back upon the blade. And if that push called lift, that, th that upward force of the air shoving on the blade, is equal to the weight, then that, ho that will hover in midair. If it's greater than the weight, then the, then the airplane, which is a helicopter, will actually rise up off the ground. Really cool idea. So birds and airplanes do the same. Airplanes ride on the wind because as you force an airplane through the air, Okay, going forward, then what you're doing is you're riding it on the air. It's shoving the air down. The air is shoving the plane up, and you get a uh, difference in pressure, and, and uh, you'll see it when we study an airplane wing later. But the slightly tilted wings deflect the oncoming air down, and then the air pushes up on the airplane. So, here's this uh, question. Tug of war between boys and girls, and I guess this is a sexist book, and you think that the boys are going to win because they're big and strong, and the girls are, are just wimpy. That's never been my experience. But if the boys are wearing socks and the girls are wearing hard rubber shoes, who's going to win? Do you see the girls will have to win even if they're weaker because the girls have friction and the boys have no friction. So the, the boys can't pull against anything because there's nothing to pull back against them. They're exerting force on the floor and slipping. The girls are exerting, exerting a small force on the floor, or even if, if they're true here, and getting grip, and the floor is actually winning the game. <laughs> the girls and the boys both aren't winning. The floor wins. So why do objects experience the same amount of force accelerate different rates? Think about the answer. They are of different masses. The different masses will exert diff different accelerations based upon the same force. The only time it will be the same is if you have two forces that are exactly the same. And then you'll have equal opposite uh, forces experiencing the same acceleration. 
Otherwise, you're going to have a difference in acceleration.